My name is Ian. I'm a producer for Texas Cigar Roadshow. And I'm David. I'm a Texan, and I love cigars. This is Pit Stop. Welcome back to Texas Cigar Roadshow Pit Stop. We're so glad you could be with us here at Tobacco Cabana. Huge thanks, as always, to Steve and Rhonda, Bob and David for having us out and for showing us some of the finest hospitality in Texas. Um, we got the Texas toast coming up in just a bit. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Damn, we can't forget that. Got to give some shout outs. Shout outs. So uh, we, love, we love the comments that you guys have been leaving. Uh, they always make our day couple that uh, have a uh, couple that we just picked at random. Yeah. Uh, from the Nick Perdomo pit stop, Chad Manson says, I love listening to cigar manufacturers owners. It's easy to help support them if you see the passion they have for what they do. Exactly, and, <laughs> exactly what I said. Nick Perdomo. Yeah. That's a man of passion. passion. From that same video, uh, Alan Burris. Hope I'm pronouncing your uh, last name correct, Alan. Great show. Mr. Perdomo is a very interesting person and has a love for his business, and you can tell. It amazes me how some of these businesses start and how they've done so well. Yeah. Sounds like we need to go visit the Perdomo farm. Have a great day. There we go. Let's that's, make a trip, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a track from Texas down to Esteli. Mm -hmm. uh, so to, uh, to Chad and Alan and all of our viewers, Definitely. we want to offer up uh, a toast, a Texas toast. Grab your beverage. Whatever you're drinking, coffee, water, there's we're not uh, we're not partial. And join us for Texas toast. For a Texas toast. Cheers. 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 Yes. I always forget the glass thing. Right, do you do the do you do the table? I I always forget the table. I try to. Um, and then I don't. The first time I do it, you're not doing it. Yeah. And <laughs> the we'll Texas get, we'll, toast is about the people. Yes, it's about it's about yeah. We want to. We appreciate everybody watching, and we definitely want to include everybody in what we're doing here. Yeah, that's that's totally. That's and that, I mean c comments like that. That's what the I love seeing that stuff. And um, I'm usually the one you you'll respond to some of them, but I'm usually the one responding to a lot of those because well, I they expect you. Yeah, I always and, and, feel like I'm uh, uh, plagiarizing or not plagiarizing, impersonating. Nah, nah, but it, it, we're we're Texas Cigar Roadshow, whether it's you or me. And we want to make sure you guys know that we appreciate each and every one of yeah, you guys yeah. watching. We made well over a thousand subscribers now, and we're just going to keep climbing. And it's because of you guys. Absolutely. So, well, today we're talking about Vitolas. Vitolas. Vitolas of cigars. Uh, and you're smoking a Crux. Yes, Crux. So, so this one interesting. This is this is the old label, right? Yeah. So. Side story, I, uh, I recently was uh, taking a little road trip down to uh, the Big Bend area of Texas, and on the way I stopped by the Train Car Cigar Bar in uh, Big Spring, and I got to meet Sam, mm -hmm. or meet him, I've, I've met him before, but I got to meet him again. Yeah. Uh, and he had his, his, uh, his box of wares, and uh, so Sam is with, is, is repping Crux Cigars. They're in the, they're, they've just rebranded. So they've got a new label, brand new label, brand new boxes. He was showing me them. They're, cool. they're beautiful. But he gave me, he gave you and me an exclusive, uh, an older label. This Li is uh, the- Limitada. Limitada. Uh, I was trying, I was trying to find information. So here's what I, here's what, here's, here's from their website, appropriately named. Intelligently premium, with only a thousand boxes produced each year, the Limitada wow. is rooted in exclusivity, superior with notes of earth and pepper. This Good. limited edition cigar has the anatomy of exceptional tobacco. When quality and craftsmanship get rolled into one, it becomes a national treasure that only makes select appearances during prime time. Cool. I'm about no, it's, a, it's a good looking cigar. Um, the the wrapper, uh, you know, great. I'm sorry, Sam, you told me what was in it and I, and I forgot. I didn't yeah. write it down. No, that's a great looking cigar and very old. I mean, this is from the old band. Obviously, they're rebranding. This thing's been sitting around a while. This has got some age so on it. Check out the cello on that. Okay, <laughs> yellow cello, for sure. That, All that matters. Showing, uh, <laughs> showing those oils releasing into the cellophane uh, just shows some age on there and that's what you want. Uh, I love being able to get some yellow cello shots. So if we're talking, yes, absolutely. If we're talking Vitolas, would I call this a Toro? This would be a Toro box press. 
Toro, oh yeah, yeah, Toro box press. Yeah. So, and, and there are people that I don't prefer a box press. I, I just don't like it. Other people like it because you set it on the table, it is not going to roll anywhere. Yeah. Now, is that the, to me, that's the, that's the benefit of the box press. Yes, I think so. That's the only, otherwise, it's, 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 a, it's still a Toro in length. Uh, d uh, the diameter is about the same. They've just boxed it instead of it being round. Yeah. Um, and so one that is rounded, all your rounded cigars are going to be more, I think if I say the word right, it's pare parejo. Uh, uh, Martin, you can correct me. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then you have your figurado, which figure, so shapes, it's curved, anything curved, like uh, I did not uh, uh, a, tor uh, a torpedo. That would be a figurado. Okay. Um, so uh, the Vitola is just that's the shapes. The sh that's that means the, the length. Sh that's the length. shapes. That's just sh that's all your different size and shapes of a cigar. Oh, okay. That's everything. So your different Vitolas you all have. Do you have a? I want to say an, a Parejo, and then Figurado. You have those two groups, and then everything. So everything then falls into that. So a Lancero would be in your Parejo. Uh, torpedo Salomon would fall into your Figurado. Well, do you have so do you have examples? Uh... I do, I do. <laughs> so this is my one of my so trusty. You got your 30-06 in here. <laughs> <laughs> this is an uh, old 50 cal ammo box. Oh, that uh, was for your uh, Desert Eagle. Yeah, that's um, my travel. One of my travel humidors, and I've got it outfitted with three of these trays, these cedar trays inside here. Um, We've got, there's another Toro box press right there, a little bit bigger gauge. Is that Hoyo de Monterey? Uh, this is a Hoyo, uh, they don't make these anymore, uh, 150th anniversary. Um, so there's another box press. Uh, now is that also a Toro? That's a Toro. Toro. Toro would be the length. Yes. Six inch to six and a half inch. Okay. It's going to be your Toro. Um, You've got this here, this PDR. Whoa! That bad boy. Now what, so I know, I call the, you know, I, I think of ring gauge, that's a that's yeah. a fat ring gauge. That's, uh, this has got to be a 60 or a 70. So let's take our little ring gauge. So you can take this little sheet here, you've got your ring gauges, okay? And all you're gonna do is take that cigar and see where it fits. And that's a, that's a good, that's a, 68 or 70, somewhere around in there is what that's going to be. A 68 or 70, I want to say 70. Okay? So that's a 70 gauge. I am not going to smoke that. <laughs> that's just too big. I, I just don't why? like ring gauges. That's going to be something I gift to somebody. Why? why, why? <laughs> it's well, just, I know, for, for me, I wouldn't want to. I don't like the way it feels when I have to draw on it. Okay. That's, yeah, my, my go to is so I like, I really like the wrapper. Uh, of a cigar, I like the taste of the wrapper, and I, I taste, I feel like I taste less of the wrapper if it's a bigger ring gauge. So you like a Lancero, maybe. Lancero, or just. Uh, so it would be literally the difference between Lancero and that Gordo. Oh well, yeah, you don't have to go that extreme, yeah. but like so, a, a 40, 45 yeah. ring gauge. Yeah. So if you looked at it on the chart, this is going to be a Gordo. This is definitely a Gordo um, size here. Then you have your, you know, you have your traditional robusto. There's a good McAuliffe Matafina. All right, so that's a Robusto. Five to five and a half inch. Yeah. 50 to 54, 52. Once you start getting 54, 56, then it goes into the double Robusto. Okay. So they're going to call it a double Robusto. Um, we've got, here's my, now I'm going to show you this. Remember with the guys when we had DC on here, he said it wasn't, a, he wasn't a true Lancero, sure, sure, right? Sure. Because it is a little bit bigger diameter. Here's, here's a Rojas. Uh, the band fell off. Uh, band fell off here. So here's a Rojas statement. That is, you can see the difference between. Pretty close, but yeah. It's close, but it's not. Yeah. So this is a true Lancero. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is just, so what do you call it? I'd still call it a Lancero. I would. Because the, right off the bat, without. It feels like a Lancero. Yeah, it, it looks, feels, it's. It, to me, that's a Lancero. So some of these times when they do these these sizes, it's like they create a different shape. Well, what do you call it? Well, they can call it whatever they want, right? <laughs> yeah. They call it a, call it a double Lancero. You know, 
Um, uh, Lancero Gordo. I don't know. Um, come up with something, right? I don't right? know. DC guys, I don't know if you need some extra advice. <laughs> that That's a Toro, but I would call that... That's, that's a fat a Toro? That's, that's, a a fat, to that's a fat that's Toro. A, that's a fatter Toro, though. That's a fatter Toro. Just the length alone, that's a Toro. But it's going to be more of a double Toro or a Toro Gordo. So the bigger in the ring gauge you start getting, they start calling it a Gordo, right. or they'll call it a double. Supersizing it. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, yeah, so in my mind, I've got, I've got like four or five, so I think, I think the Robusto, if I want to have a, an, a, okay, that's a Churchill. I would that's, call that a Churchill. That is definitely a Churchill. That is a straight Churchill, if it's not on the edge of being an El Presidente. Yeah, yeah. El Presidente would be eight inches. Churchill would be seven inches. Now, is the El Presidente oh, really? from, like, Castro? Yeah, I think back I would, in, in those times, yeah. Yeah, yeah that definitely. Um, and then you have, here's a good traditional, that's that's on the side of a, a, a skinny Churchill. It's a McAuliffe, Riata, great cigar. On the side of a skinny Churchill, extra long Toro, short Churchill. You but know, because a, you look look at you. Okay, so our our, gu our gauge is here. We got this one that we can actually slip this into. Okay, it's going to fit. It's a 54, uh, 50, 52 inch gauge. It's going to fit in there without the wrapper. And then we're looking at the gauge. It's seven inches. So that would be a Churchill. They would that would be a skinnier Churchill. So the, compare that with. Yep. Can you pull out that other yeah. Churchill? Yeah. See here, you can see the difference in those two sizes. Okay. So you're you're naming the length. In a Churchill, or you're naming the girth in a Toro or Robusto. They can have a range. They can be within a range of 50 to 52 to be a Robusto. Then once you get to 54, 56, it's a double Robusto if it's within five to five and a half inches. Okay. We're getting way into the weeds with this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what that is great. Really yeah. Do because I'm, I'm confused. Oh, but, 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 but real I'm quick, real, here. yeah, but real quick. So I, so the basics that I think of are. Robusto, Toro, Churchill, and then I throw in a Lancero with that. Yeah. Those are when I'm going to a cigar shop. Those are the. Those are the four you ask for. Oh, well, just so that, it doesn't matter the length or the girth. Because I don't know. Right. Like yeah. it's not. It's not because that's just my my standard. I want this in a Toro or Robusto. Can I show you guys our Toro Robusto Gordo? Please do, yeah. Bob. So, oh, oh, while he's doing that. So this one, okay, Torpedo, because it's tapered, it would fall into the Figurado category. Okay. Because these are rounded, this is the other one, the Parejo, uh, I wanna say, I'm, I'm probably saying it wrong, but this is not a Figurado. This, anything where it's curved. At, now is a Figurado a subset of the no, Pitola? It's a, no, it's not a subset, it's a different set. Okay. This is a Figurado. This is a Salomon, this is a uh, Cavalier Genevieve, this is a Salomon from PDR. Those are Figurados. The, sh the curved shape. Yes. This one. When it's all one shape, that's mm -hmm. Parejo. Okay. Okay, when it's one shape, when it, when when, it dip, when, when it, it doesn't bulge or... Yeah, when, or, it, when I mean, you yeah, have it this... It paper or anything like that. Uh, Calibre, the twisted, that's going to be... It's Figurado means, if I understand it right, figure. Yes. Like shape. Yes. All right, so that you see these shapes are curvy. So, but but a Figurado could be, could be, you could have a different Figurado of a Toro or a different Figurado of a Robusto, mm -hmm. right? In no. lengthwise, they won't really call it a Robusto, no, because oh, okay. it's going to fall into the category of a Bellicoso or a Torpedo, Whoa. okay? It's going to fall into those categories. So we've got this, we'll put this chart up on, on the, on the, on the video here, but you can see these cigar shapes. Anything that's curved like this is gonna fall into the Figurado category. Tapered, anything oh, okay. like that. Anything that's straight like these. Now this is a Figurado, okay? But I guess anything that's straight with a curved, regular curved cap like this, curved cap, that's gonna be your regular Parejo, I want to say, I'm I know I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. Um, not a Spanish-speaking person. So let me see if I have another one. So we have... I'm just trying to help uh, make sense of all this. So, yeah. so we've got a short one here. 
Um, that's, lots of Vitolas. Right. That will, like this one, Corona. This is a Corona. Why? Because it's a smaller ring gauge. It's a it's a 46. Okay, but the length of it does not matter. Mm -mm, no. So if it was a seven inch Corojo. Would it be a Corojo Churchill? Now Corojo is a wrapper. Okay, Corona. Corona. I'm sorry. Corona. Would it be a Corona Churchill? But it was seven inches. You know, that's where you start getting into these. It's like, what do you Everybody call it? Everybody has a different name. Yeah. What do you call it? Because. Uh, I was hoping we could make you have this a, a little bit enlightening, I but it's just, I think, I think we're just making it confusing. This chart, you can see on this chart that it has it has the length, but it does not have the range. There is a range. Right, so it can it fall got, between a half an inch or so, five to five and a half, and it's a Robusto. We've got eight sticks right here. Six to six and a half, it's a Toro. We've got eight sticks. Well, we, we've already established this is a Tor box press Toro. Right. Churchill? Uh, Churchill. No, just just a Churchill. Churchill. Yeah. Even though Churchill. even though the ring gauges are slightly different. Slightly different. They're and this one's on the edge of being El Presidente. Okay. Because it let's look at the uh, So set. you can either name it by its length or you can name it by its girth. Is that correct? I think they fit together. Yeah, but I think be, because the gordo is referring to the girth. Right. Robusto is referring to the girth in that you know it's going to fall between 50 and 52. Right. Okay? Right. And and so if it goes over that, then you're going to have to add the term double Robusto to it to know that it is a bigger ring gauge Robusto. Okay. Okay? But this one is seven and a half, so it could still be a Churchill, but I would, I would probably call it an El Presidente. All right, so we've just changed. This is... This is an El Presidente, yeah. or just Presidente. El Presidente. El Presidente. You know. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, that's a that's a Bellicoso. Okay. In, it's not in, a torpedo. But it's a torpedo, Bellicoso, a yeah, torpedo. Bellicoso is in between the Toro and a Robusto? That's a Toro size, okay. if you will, length. If I said Toro, then you know it's a six inch cigar. Oh, really? If I said Robusto, you know it's a five, five and a half inch cigar. That's what I would think, yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter the girth. So you, well then, yeah. Then you then you're going to add Gordo to it or double to it to know that it's a fatter girth Toro. God. But this is this looks like a standard. That's a ring standard. Gauge. That's a standard. Uh, um, 50, 40, 48 or fifty. That's a fifty. Fifty-two. That's a fifty-two. Right, so that's 52. a standard Toro. Uh, one stand more time. What's this one? Uh, Bellicoso or a Toro torpedo. Most a lot of people call that a torpedo. Okay. So I, if I'm, I would, yeah, I would think if I'm going into a shop, I would say. Uh, Tele, uh, torpedo is what we've got on here. Is what it's going to look like. That straight down the body, curved at the head. Yeah. Okay. But there are different lengths of torpedoes, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. bellicoso tor, or just bellicoso. Yeah. Torpedo. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't have one. I've got one at home. That's a chisel. Uh huh. The 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 head of it. Is, is a chisel. Yeah. LFD makes some. Yeah. Um, Chisels are good for punching, punching the top. Punching top of it, yeah. I didn't know that until a year or two ago. So, see, they, they call this a Presidente because I don't know why, but that's a, that's, that's show a... The, can you show the camera? Yeah. They're calling this on here a Presidente, and that, to me, that's a, that's a Salomon. That's, that's a, yeah, there's, okay, cool. That's a... Um, that's this. That's a Salomon right there. Fatter at this at the where you light it at the foot. Smaller ring gauge at the front at the head, and it's tapered at the head so that you can smoke a bigger ring gauge, but not have the bigger ring gauge in your mouth. Yeah. And th that's why people like these. Uh, then you've got the little bitty ones that that really bubble out that are perfectos. Um, they're about this big, and they're real small, and then they go like almost like balloon out. There is so much I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, so what do we call this one? Uh, a cigar that I won't smoke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you call that a gordo? Yeah, gordo. All right. Uh, nothing against people who like these cigars. No, no, nothing at all. That's why there's so many different shapes because. How are you liking the crux? I'm liking. Yeah, I, de <laughs> I am definitely liking that crux. Let me. Oh, uh -oh. I've been talking too much. Sorry. No, no, definitely. How are you liking it? Did you did did you, you get think? to smoke one with uh, Sam at the train no, car? No, I I so I was about to light these up at the train car, uh, 
and or mine because I had yours. Yeah. And I thought, no, I'm gonna save this because uh, it'd be fun to smoke. You know, when you. a cigar goes out, I don't know what you guys do, but what I do, I try to take. You know, if it goes out, knock the ash off. Sure. You don't Try to, to blow as much that. ash off as you can, right, right, and right. then just relight it like you've starting. You're starting over. So and go ahead and toast get it. Get that going. Yeah. And shouldn't it take it as much to relight it? But just get as much ash off of there as possible. You can also do a blowback. Yeah, and then uh, purge it. Back. Purge it. Blow through purge it. Purge it. Blow back it. Yeah, but it, this was out. This was out. But um, yeah, that's something I, I like to do when I'm smoking it too. Is purge it. Blow through it to get. Because you're going to pull tar through here to an extent. Uh, you're pulling some of it and the tobacco is getting heated up. Blow it through there, purge it, get some of those. And then when you draw on it again, you should get some fresh flavors. So That's really good. Yeah, it is. It is good. I like Thank you, Sam. And yeah, definitely, Sam. Um, always love getting cigars from uh, reps and things that have been sitting Especially, around yeah, for a while. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's got a little age to it. Mm -hmm. OK, so uh, this one straight uh, Toro Toro box press yeah just like this so you know just box like press box, that yeah. we're smoking that's a Toro uh, that's a straight Robusto, Robusto. straight Robusto this is just like we just call this a Robusto right yep that's straight Robusto they don't they don't have it on here but they're showing the size as a uh, 5 by 50 that's a double Robusto is that 5 by 58 Five by fifty-six is what I read. That's a to me. That's a double robusto. Okay. okay. Fifty-six is over your fifty-four. That's if it's not, it's, it's on, on the, the edge. It's on the cusp. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a fatter robusto. But, but would, some people might say fifty. Yeah, you can push it to fifty-six. If it's but fifty-eight would definitely be a double robusto. Um, Viewers, what do you think? Yeah. Tell leave, us. Leave us a comment. Yeah. Really. Really. Uh, I well okay. This is a this is a fatter Toro, right? Yeah, that's a fatter Toro. So I would call it a Toro Gordo. That would be me. Look on a lot of manufacturers will like McAuliffe does. They'll put the actual length and size on there, and sometimes the name of what the, you know if it's a Toro sure, or whatever. Sure, sure, sure. So some some manufacturers do that. So you're going to be able to have those on there. That's pushing it right there for me on ring gauge. On what yeah, I, what that's I a little smoke. large. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm 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 with you, 100. Yeah, percent That's pushing it right there. Uh, I'll, 60 is your no, nah. I really don't go 60. 58 probably that's tops. The where to where I'll enjoy it. Yeah. Um, Everybody's different. No, a, so you used to be. Here's the thing. I remember when I first met you. You were you were the robusto guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're right. And and at some point. You became, you, you favored the Lanceros. Are you still, do you still call yourself a Lancero guy? Yeah. Or do you favor the, like, do you have a Vitola that's your favorite? Yes. The favorite Vitola is, is a Lancero. Yeah. That's my favorite. Now, second favorite would be Robusto because I like the shorter smoking length of a Robusto compared to that extra inch mm -hmm. or half an inch of a Toro mm -hmm. and a bigger ring gauge of a Toro. Um, so I like the Lancero like we've always discussed because of the smaller ring gauge, the wrapper to filler to, uh, binder uh, ratio, you're going to taste more of the wrapper. Once you start getting into the cigars and you really start wanting to go, you know what, I want to know what I'm tasting more rather than just sitting down and smoking a cigar. I think you, I think you got to go with the smaller ring gauge. Now, if it's not Lancero, it's Corona. So a Corona. Do you have an example of a Corona? Yeah, I showed you the one that um, Noel Rojas blended for us for my North Texas Cigar Society. Bro. That that is a Corona. That's a Corona. And what makes that a Corona is the ring gauge, right? The ring gauge. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a skinny Toro is what I would call it. <laughs> but it's yeah, a Corona. But it's a Corona. Yeah. You, you, you can look and see. See, now, some of them will call a Lancero, they'll call it a Pantella. I've never heard that. Yeah. And so uh, then you've got Corona or maybe a Lonsdale. Lonsdale's an older term. Um, Lonsdale, Corona, same thing. Oh, we got, what is this? That's a... Is that similar to this? That's a no, great that's, cigar. That's smaller. It is a great cigar. That's one about Edgar Hoyle's uh, little... 
Cabron uh, East uh, Cabron East uh, that's Cito, a good Cabron Cito. 30 40 minute smoke yeah that would yeah that's a you know see that's gonna I don't know because there's not anything on the chart do you call it a short Corona? Because that's the same ring, ga ring gauge as my Corona. So do you call it a short Corona? That's what I'm, you know? <laughs> Hope you didn't come here for answers because we're just giving you <laughs> questions. <laughs> you know, uh, they make these untraditional sizes. So, y yes, and what I, so uh, you remember uh, when you interviewed David Blanco, uh, mm. he was talking about, and I've heard Noel say the same thing, when you're, when you're having, so if you have a blend, you know, you're, if, if it's the Rojas, it's the statement blend or the blue, the blue bonnet blend. Right. And he'll have different ring gauges for those blends. Right. Uh, or I'm thinking David Blanco when he was saying his uh, Blanco 9. Mm. Uh, he, he has to blend it differently, a little bit differently for the smaller ring gauges meaning different proportions of tobacco mm -hmm. to get that same flavor profile because it's going to smoke differently with that different ring gauge. Yeah, is that yeah. what you remember? Yeah, that's what yeah, that, yeah, that is and that's that's the reason why I mean I have such a great appreciation for those guys that are master blenders like that that are that know those tobaccos and know how to blend because I wouldn't have a clue. Uh, yeah. I don't want to make cigars. I just want to smoke them. <laughs> right. And so uh, I don't want to make beer. I just want to drink it. Um, uh, and those people that know how to do those things, I'm not worthy. <laughs> uh, it's just, I mean, uh, kudos to them. I mean, it's just, oh, it's sure. an art. It's an yes. art. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, box presses are great. I don't mind them, but I, I don't gravitate towards them. I'm not going to go, oh, I, I want, do you have that in a box press? I'm not going to do that. Uh, if that's all that cigar, it's a new cigar, and it's something I, you know, I haven't smoked, and they only have it in a box press, okay, I'll go ahead and smoke it. Oh, sure. But I won't ask for it. Yeah. This it's like olives on my pizza. I am not going to ask for it, but I will eat them if they're there. Sure. This David, is a good... does it smoke differently? That's I a don't think question. so. I don't think so. So uh, it doesn't, it's not that it... It's not that it matters on the taste, right? It's just a, it's a preference thing. It's mm -hmm. a preference of how, how it feels in your mouth. I don't think it can matter. I don't, if, also, if I am it, wrong, if there's a down. maker, if there's a maker out, if Nick Perdomo's watching this, or David Blanco's watching this, or somebody that knows blending, if, if, if the box press makes a difference on your taste, please tell me. I can't see how it could because the diameter is the same, basically. It's just box press. Yeah. The length is the same. Everything is the same. It's just box press. Yeah. If it does make a difference, I would really like to know how it does because... Here's, yeah. So here's here's what I've... It's... To me, it's a... To me, it's a feel. I don't know why. I, and I'm, I, I'm with you. If I'm just going to grab a cigar and go smoke on my patio... Uh, then yeah, it doesn't I, matter. I'm looking at how much time do I have? Yeah, sure. That's that's my first thing that I'm looking at. How much time do I have? What cigar am I going to pick out? Right, but the for some reason to me, the box press feels a little bit special, a little bit pre. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, it feels like it's. Um, I mean, obviously you have to have. I mean, it's not everybody has a box press uh, cigar press. You know, um, um, not everybody makes a box press. Right. So. Uh, and, and, and there are different sizes of box press. Sure. Oh, I've got the, you know, the CAO spark plug. Yeah. Little bitty thing, right. box pressed. But but the CAO um, flathead is a huge box press. Yeah. Whereas the uh, Nat Seco, uh, yeah. 2019 well, car of the year, that Churchill and Robusto and Toro yeah. are all box pressed. Well, and it's a small box press. And, and um, David Blanco said he, you know, he made a box pressed Lancero. Dissident has it's a, it's a it's not a Lancero. It's not as fat as a Churchill, but it's box pressed. It's a it's a good sized cigar. So it, uh, it I wish there were I wish we had a maker here that could yeah that be check fun. us on this. But the box press to me feels like it takes a little bit extra work to get right. I think they roll it the same. It's just the press they put it in. I don't know. Yeah, you know. I think uh, that's right. You correct know. us or tell us in the comments if you if you know. Yeah. <laughs> but Noel, he would know. But if, but yeah, like, know. but every time I go to every time I go to a shop and I'm looking at the different if I if I want a blend of a cigar, uh, and and I see that blend, I'll I'll see the blend in just a regular Toro, 
and then there's the box press, and it's like it's always like Ooh. eighty cents more or a dollar more. So it feels like you know if you're if you're gifting it to somebody, it's that little it's, extra touch. Yeah, it's like um, it's like getting coffee, and you have your regular coffee bean, then you get a pea berry. And a pea berry, okay, so a coffee bean, there's two beans in a pod, yes. and they face each other on that flat side. A pea berry is it didn't split. There's only one bean in there. Okay. It's special. <laughs> it's supposed to have more flavor to it. I don't know if that's necessarily true. A coffee person would probably disagree with me. Oh. But I have had some pea berries. And Hot sports opinion yeah, here. Ethiopian uh, pea berries, uh, things like uh, Tanzani uh, Tanzanian pea berry. Um, and that the pea berry just means there's one bean in the pod, yeah, and not two. But you would, you would presumably pay a premium on that. Yeah, right? you pay a little bit more for pea berries. Why? Because there's not as many of them. So not everybody box presses. Mm -hmm. So maybe that you know that that is a legit reason to say, okay, we have taken, we've gotten the the box press press to press the tobacco into a box press. We've taken a little bit more time, and 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 we're doing something that not everybody does. So if I'm gonna gift you a box of cigars, you don't care a hill of beans about box press or not. No, if you're gonna <laughs> gift me something, no. Just don't gift me something 60 ring gauge, because I'll re-gift it <laughs> next. <laughs> You'll be giving somebody a bomb. Uh... Yeah, I'll be bomb, yeah, I'll use those. Isn't there a, a certain artistic uh, part of this that you, you know, the art of... See, that's where, yeah, that's where I am. The, the art of doing it differently. Yes, right? yeah, yeah. There's, there's, when you know that somebody took a little bit extra time, even if it's just well, uh, 20 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Let me tell you, it just came to mind. Talking about taking different time in a really unusual, I wish I had it, I, I can get it. There's one of my favorite shops out in um, Ybor City, Florida, Tampa Bay area, right? Ybor City. Uh, the shop is called Nika Habana. He's Cuban, bred, I mean, his grandfather Cuban. He has the presses that his grandfather used in Cuba to make this cigar. The, the head of it is here, normal ring, and then it comes in and it zips down into the size of a straw. Okay, not a, I, not a torpedo. No, the head, just where you smoke it, yes. is a straw-sized whereas this is the regular size and that you have to have a box you have to have a press to do that and uh, so yeah there's some box presses and the, and those are so this is what we're talking about thanks bob 1880s 1890s I think. yeah so that oh. there's your there's your box press that you're going to you're going to put these cigars in that that are going to match yeah. up yeah, with right that there. right there and it's going to press the tobacco down they're going to put this in stack 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 and put a vice on top of them right and press this down for what, four hours, three, four hours, you know, depending. And, you know, Noel, somebody like that isn't gonna know that. But that's gonna be a small Figueroa uh, cigar because it's tapered right there. So and that's the, very it's, cool. It's the feel of the cigar. Imagine the it's amount of cigars. Hand, imagine it, the amount of cigars that were. You can't, you can't imagine. I have another one. And who smoked? It's, you can just set it. I, what that's I like history, on, baby. <laughs> that is. I like that you can. I do like that you can just set a, a box press cigar on a table and it's not going to roll away in the wind. This is one that's a little more. There it is. Yeah. That that that's that's, that's it right there. So well, this is a this is, okay. So imagine this is not just a pigtail or a, a part that you're going to cut off, but this is actually. This it would still be air will flow through this. This one it won't. Okay. This is going to be... Gonna, that's part that you, that you cut off. It's right here. If you look at this, here's your straw end right here. And that's going to... The air is going to flow through that. Where'd you get this? Uh, Dave got it. Wow. Yeah, because that's, that's not... It's that's been a while not a, since that's been used. Yeah, it's not an everyday... Actually, I think it's signed by somebody. Not on the other side of that one. Wild Bill Hickok. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, El Artista. El Artista, yeah. Yeah, Buffalo 10. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So El Autista signed that one to them. They've got this here. Yeah, um, yeah, very, very cool. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Yeah, those are neat. So, uh, <laughs> Vitolas. There are that, a lot of Vitolas. That's what, Vitolas just that's means cigar sizes. Yes. What Vitola are you smoking? Oh, I'm smoking a Robusto. I'm smoking a Toro. I'm smoking a Bellicoso. <laughs> yes, right? That. Now, okay, so that's a... Figueroa, Bellicoso would be a Figueroa category of 
of the Vitola. Vitola. Okay, yeah. Okay. So Parejo, it is a subcategory. Parejo would be just your regular looking cigar. So these are our house cigars. Yeah. If you guys can guess the size of them, you can have them. Without without the chart. Okay. Or guess the, the gauge? Guess what they're called. Okay, I mean, I would... Well, that's, that's a, a Robusto. Bit, that's a... Okay, it's Robusto Toro Gordo. Yeah. So that, you pick it up. That's a Robusto. Okay. That's a Toro. Um... That's a Gordo. That's a Gordo. Yeah, that's a Gordo. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a that's a that's a Toro. That's a Toro Robusto Gordo. I am so sorry to say that you almost had a uh, uh, but you it perfectly right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You phoned, and so that's uh, and then and then you that you know line. that's something fun. We've done that on the show too. We've got the I pigtail. Do like the pigtail. Everybody likes a pigtail because what do I do with it? I just tear it off. Yeah. I tear it off with your teeth. Yeah, just bite it off. Bite it off. That's yeah. why. From what I read, that's why they did a pigtail, because if they were rolling these and they're out in the field picking tobacco leaves, yeah. I don't have a cutter back then, I'm not that fancy, bite it off, and I can light it up. That's that's why you had those. So yeah, yeah, those, you know, standard size, that's standard sizes. <laughs> but I think, like you said, you go, what do you call that? I don't know. What do you call this? I don't know. I don't know, Edgar Hoyle. Tell me what you call this. Short smoke. Yeah. He calls it Cabron. <laughs> Yeah, Cabron, uh, Cabroncito. Yeah. Cabroncito, yeah. Yeah, that's a great cigar. I've had that. It really is. Yeah, so, well, cool. I mean, <laughs> I hope we, if we didn't, if we didn't confuse you, <laughs> uh, we, I mean, I don't think there's... There's this website called Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Tell us, tell us, hey, I would like to know what you guys' favorite uh, Vitola is. Ask the yes, yes. Tell, yeah. yeah. Tell me what your, your favorite Vitola is. That's what I'd like to know. I'm wondering what my favorite is. I kind of, I kind of go to, towards the Toro. Yeah, I think you're a Toro guy. I yeah. don't think you mind the long smokes. I like, I like you taking smoke my time faster. With it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You know, I'll where, smoke where are we a Robusto. At? Are we... I'll smoke a Robusto. You started before. You, just you started before me. I was, I started after you, and I'm still ahead of you. Yeah, I, I'll smoke a Robusto. He'll smoke a Toro. We'll finish at the same time. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. All right, well, uh, hope this has been uh, some fun information or at least yeah. spark some fun questions. Yeah. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for subscribing. Clicking that. Clicking that sweet, sweet notification bell. And until next time, enjoy the leaf. Grow the culture. Texas Cigar Roadshow is presented by the North Texas Cigar Society.